Hey everyone, thanks for joining. I'm gonna allow you all to talk because there's just a few of you in here right now. Um, so if you care to talk, you definitely can. It is uh, just make sure that you keep yourself muted if you're not talking, that way um, any background noise or what have you isn't going to be seen by others or heard by others, I should say. Um, so I'm just gonna prepare, I'm gonna share this. Uh, hopefully I can share this in uh, to Facebook. This one here we're going to do, it's going to be all about the emails, so templates and campaigns and things like that. So um, I know that there's a lot of people that potentially want to know how to do this stuff. So we are going to just launch it live in the clients if it allows me. Bear with me. And then of course, as we go along, if you guys have anything that you, you need any further like questions, by all means, just, just ask those questions. I'd be happy to answer them for you. So apologies, this is taking a little longer. Um, All right, let's see if we can just go live without that. See if it works. If not, it is what it is. All right, how is everyone today? Yeah, perfect. All right, so. Uh, so basically in here, you guys do have the ability to create newsletters uh, if you want to, or email templates. The email templates are beneficial because really once you have a template, you can just click on the lead name. And if it's, it's a template that's already there, you're just going to select the template you want to do. And so if you just start typing the name of that template, whatever it may be called, you can simply just select it and then send it to that individual. You can also, uh, let's just uh, pretend it's this one. You can go in, you can edit that email before sending it. So you can still customize it a little bit after the fact if you need to modify it for that individual. But once it's there, it's just gonna make it a lot easier for you to just select it and then send it, as well as it makes it a lot easier when you are sending out a mass communication of any sort that you will be able to, it, it's the bulk of the content is already there that you're wanting to send out. Um, right, right then and there. So how you create an email template is just over here in the settings and you're going to head on over to the email section. Now, once you're on the email section, you do have different options. Now, keep in mind that you do have this question mark up at the top here. Um, this is going to allow you with this loads. It's, I know it's been taking a while lately. Um, it'll have little tutorials all reflective of everything that you're seeing here. So all the little tutorials will have to do with like the email header, how to create one of those, um, email templates, your signature. Um, and if you guys are on the automated system, you also have the ability to customize those emails as well that go out uh, with those listings so that you can um, essentially have more branding on those you know listing so you can see here now that it's actually loaded you have you know different videos and how to's and so on and so forth um so right there now to edit an email template you're just going to go over here now if you have email templates some of you will have templates already sitting in your crm um, that you can definitely edit so they may have already been there from before but you can edit them so you can take any any email that's already there and modify it. So like this one here, for example, doesn't even indicate like the person's name, right? It's like, it's like a, it's like an email without like a, any kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? 
I don't know, um, recognition of the person you're sending it to. So you can always just go high. And these are the short codes. So whenever you're creating an email or an SMS template, there's always short code on the right hand side, which is automatically going to replace information depending on that short code. So in this case, I would want it to replace the person's first name. So you just drag and drop it. Now, I probably wouldn't want this as bold. I'd probably want that as, as just being regular font. Um, so you just drag and drop. This is going to automatically replace that with the lead's first name, regardless of who you're sending it to. Um, so these are all short code having to do with the lead's information. Um, that are there. It's just going to automatically pull that data. You also have the agent short code. So this is going to replace it with information of yours. So whether it's your first or last name, uh, typically you would end an email with your email signature, but you can also have a header as well. So how we've seen that, uh, that one header on the one email there, um, that black box, that was just pulled using this, the, the email header as, as the short code in there to pull it automatically in there. You also have element data. Uh, so these element data, so if you, were, if you were to type in, for example, over here, you know, good, and then you drag this over here, um, what that does is going to replace it with either the word morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on what time of day this email is going out. So if it was right now, for example, I'm on the West Coast, so it's only nine in the morning, um, but let's say it went out, it would say good morning, Crystal, for example, um, just based on the time of day again for that. You also have activity short codes. The activity short codes is going to be reflective of the leads activity with respect to, you know, what site they registered on. Um, right here, you also can pull it so it's almost like a unique email reflective of what they've been doing so far. Like, you know, good morning, Crystal. I noticed that you've been looking at listings in most viewed city. Um, it would automatically replace it with that most viewed city that they've been looking at listings in. Um, and then you can kind of create it. So it's almost like it's a very unique to that individual, but it's all just short code pulling in all the data that the CRM system is collecting. So you can create those um, nonetheless. Um, does anyone, before I move on, like about creating a template, does anyone have any questions about the short code or, you know, editing an existing email. Um, we do also have the ability in here as well. So you have a title. So the title is for your reference only. Okay, so it's what you're going to recognize that email is being about. So you can edit that, of course. And then of course, it's the subject of why what that email is going to say when it goes out as the email subject. Um, so if you are building a campaign, some people might go why staging, you know, important, you might put like email one. For example, you know that that's the first email you want as part of your campaign. It just helps you when you're building a campaign uh, to identify if you if it helps you. Essentially, it's not necessary. It's just an additional step that some take just to kind of identify those emails. Um, so if you guys do have any questions, um, by all means, I have let you guys have the ability to talk as well as you can, you know, raise your hand, use the Q&A or use the chat feature to ask any questions that you may have. So building an email. Um, so you are go into the email template area here, and all you're gonna do is click on create new. Now when you create a new template, uh, you're gonna select a category that you want that template to go into. You will have one or two categories, sometimes more already set up in your system, just depends on when you came on board with us and, and uh, the, the emails that have already been installed for you. Uh, but you can also create your own category. So if I wanted to create a category, you know, training emails, for example, I can create that category. So then when I'm creating an email, I can select what category that email is going to go into for future reference. I know it's in this, you know, specific category. So now that I've created the category, it'll be here, the training emails right there. I want this to go into that specific category. Now let's pretend I'm doing like a test newsletter. This is going to be for my reference only. The lead does not see this. This is just how I'm going to identify this email. And then, uh, then from here, you're going to be able to put your subject in. So let's just put test subject. 
And then really it's just building out your email. Now, one thing for you guys as well, uh, you guys like doing newsletters. It's, it's all about keeping your name top of mind. Uh, there's a lot of email providers out there that you know do just that. They have generic newsletters that you guys can sign up to. Uh, you could also create, depending on you know everyone's time and I guess their ability and you know their need or want to to actually do it is is to have your newsletter a little bit more directed towards audiences. Uh, you're going to get a better engagement, right? So if you were to have your audiences based on like tags that you're using that they're downsizing and you have a newsletter that's specific for people that are retiring, downsizing, what have you, you're going to get a better engagement because it direct, it's, it's directed towards them specifically or first time buyers or whatever it may be. Um, so how, so Navita is asking, how can we add existing emails to a category? So Navita, if they're already an existing template, you can change the category when you're editing that, that email. Um, if it's a new, um, email you're creating, you would select the category that you want it to go into. If that makes sense. Does that make sense for you? So like here, once I've saved this, and let's pretend I'm editing it, I can then create and throw it into a different category for myself. Because now it's like, this is going to be part of now my seller campaign, because I want to be able to differentiate all the emails that are part of my seller campaign. So you can change, you can edit when you're editing any existing email, you can edit what category it's in as well. Um, perfect. Um, so in here, a lot of you, again, like with newsletters, there is the option as well, just so you guys are aware, is having our support team create a custom newsletter template for you. Um, there would be a cost associated with that, and that cost is going to be reflective of the, you know, the complexity of that newsletter formatting. Um, so you could always email them, see what that would look like. And basically, all you would have to do then every month is like edit the content or edit the image, swap this image for this image, um, that sort of thing. They would likely provide you with a video on how to edit your newsletter so that every month you're just updating it. It's in there. Now, um, the, the using the editor can be simple. It can also be tricky. Trust me, I've also, you know, had my fair share of uh, run-throughs and in trying to figure this out. Once you start playing around with it, I know time is sometimes of the essence for you guys. You don't have time to fiddle around with things. That's why I, I mentioned support to you guys. Now, um, what you're going to want to do is often when you have a newsletter, you might see an image, and then beside that image is, is text. Um, unfortunately, you can't have the same in some editors. You have the ability to wrap text around the image. You oh, don't necessarily have that here. Um, so what you would want to do is actually insert a table um, at that point. Um, so, I mean, where, where do I have the table? There we go. So if I have a table, let's say I want to two little slots here. So let's say I want this first slot to be a picture and then this slot is going to be the text around it. So to insert a photo here, you're just going to click on the upload image. And then this is going to open up the file on your computer. Let's just see if I have something I can just quickly throw in there. So let's say it's this, this tag one here. So I want this image. Now it's going to be the original size of that image. So we can see here that this is quite, quite large, needless to say. Um, so if you right click that image, you can change the dimensions of it. I want to see what this actually looks like at 100% if it goes. So when you put it at 100%, so again, you right click, go to image, go to 100%. What that does is it makes this image now mobile responsive. Okay, so just keep that in mind and it's going to be 100% to the cell that it's currently in. So it's going to use up that entire space. Now. If you wanted to add a cell within a cell, you definitely can. Um, you can add a different row. So basically, I wanted to undo that. I don't want to do that. Um, you can add it. So basically, once you do your for formatting, so let's just pretend this is a new listing, you know, at, you know, whatever, here, $299.99 um, there. 
if I do formatting on this, so let's say I want this to have the format of a header. I want it to be, you know, a large, so to speak, and centered and all this stuff. You can definitely do that, but any following text is going to be of that same formatting. So you're going to want to add another box in here. So go, you're going to bear with me because this is stuff that I was learning as well, um, figuring out how to, to do that. So there you have, so basically in the cell, you just go table and you add one block. So now this is two separate containers. So I can have the title in one container and the regular font in another. So if I go new listing, listing at, you know, pretend that's it. I can then highlight this, have this as a header. So it's, it's center, I can change the color of that. But let's say the font down here, I want this to not be a header. This is just gonna be a paragraph. Um, a paragraph in here, you know, then the, the text is all like, you know, an amazing condo with two plus two baths. Um, so you can have that in there in whatever you want, but then it's different, right? Now in here, you do have the ability in here to, you know, with this cell, for example, the cell properties. Um, I don't want it to have borders. So in here, you go into the border style. So you go into cell properties and then advanced, and then you're going to choose the border style that we don't want a border. We don't want anything on there and it apparently did not remove it. Uh, let's see, row, let's see if this is a row maybe. Row properties, advanced, none. Why is it not doing it? To me, this is a cell. if we hide it instead there we go so we're going to have a hidden cell so it's not a none as i said i was just going through all this before i usually pass all my stuff on to support because they're amazing um so you're going to have a hidden cell so that removes the border around it there so it looks like it's you know it is what it is you can still edit your your cell of course so if i want this moved you know higher to the top and this kind of moving everything up you can have that um now you might want to have a button so now you want a button where it links it right so what you can do is actually insert an image so i've gone on before and i've just done click here in a google search and i've looked for basically the images i'm looking up images when i'm doing that um, and then you can just take an image you may have to save it you might be able to just copy it and paste it in there yeah, so you can copy and paste it in there. And then image here, I want to change the size to, I can do 100%, but let's just pretend I want to do 150. No percent, it's right there. All right, so they can click there to see this property now. Now, in order to link this click, this image, you're just going to click on the image to highlight that image. And then you're going to click this chain link. Okay, this chain link is going to allow you to identify when somebody clicks on that image, what happens. So in this case, we would want them to go, um, let's pretend we want them just to go to Facebook.com. When they do that, one thing that I would always do is change the target to a new window. Um, that way, when you're doing this, it's not going to take over their current screen that they're on. It's going to open up a new tab in their browser, wherever they're looking from. So once once you've got that, then this, when you highlight, you can see that the, the link is highlighted here. So anyone that then clicks on this is going to be brought to facebook.com. Okay, so you can definitely do all that. You can hide all the borders around here. You can, you can essentially, if you have multiple listings and you want this, let's say you want this all just copied. Come on. Tab. I don't want that as a cell. I want this outside the cell. There we go. Um, so then I can remove, let me just row. I want to delete this row. 
there we go. So now you can just duplicate it, change all the content that's there, and change the link. So once you've done it once, you can just copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, if you have multiple listings or open houses or whatever it may be. Um, so that's one way to, to go about doing that. Now, that is, is that essentially. Now, of course, you can add more images and what have you on here. Um, so if you wanted to full, like again, you wanted to have like an image, so maybe you have some listings, maybe then you have some typing, maybe you have an article that's on your blog that you want somebody to read. Um, so you can, again, still install images. So uploading an image that you may already have. Um, let's see if I have one that's kind of here. We'll just use this other tag one. It's going to go down there. It's going to pull that image right there. Again, you can, you can put it in a cell if you want to and have it as just one cell. Or you can see what it looks like at 100% of this screen, so basically the body of the email. You can see here that now this is an image kind of breaking it, and maybe this is an image that has to do with your article, right? So, you know, what, what could it be that you're writing an article? You know, tips on preparing for a sale. Um, Cause so this could be your blog article. You can highlight that so that that's, that's your header. So again, that goes into your formatting up here. So formatting, I want this as a header right there. That's gonna have it right there for you. And then maybe I want it centered on the page. So there's the tips on that. You can also add it so that there's a border around it. You can kind of get unique. Um, again, if you wanted to put this in a cell, so let's say I wanted just this, I just copied it for sake. Sorry guys, I'm on a lap, uh, laptop today rather than my normal computer, so this is, this is fun. Um, so right here then basically, um, you could add the, the cell, right? So maybe I want a table and I just want one cell for this table. So then it throws that right there. I can then have that in a cell. I can then also fill that cell, right? So going up here, there is the background color of the cell. Maybe I want it to be blue. And we'll go down. Maybe I have to do it through cell properties because it doesn't seem to want to do that. So there we go. So this, again, is the cell properties, advanced background color. Um, so then we're gonna select. So maybe I want it like this color as the background color, okay. So now this whole background color is that of that. So it's going all through, it's filling out that color and away you go. And then you have the below content that you would add. Um, so let's pretend this was a blog post. You, you kind of give them a little snippet of what it's gonna be. You know, you're, you're typing um, the majority of it. And then you could do something like for the full article, comma, go here, you could either paste the link from your website to the blog post, okay? You can also do a hyperlink as well, right? So again, the hyperlink is same as the image. You're just gonna highlight it, and then you're gonna click on the chain link. When you check on the chain link, you're gonna go here. Let's just pretend we're going to agentlocator.ca. It tells you the text that's gonna display that's a hyperlink. Again, we wanna change it to a new window and then go okay. It's gonna ask you, to, because of the HTTP, you just go yes, you want the HTTP on there. And now this text, you can see is now underlined, is now a hyperlink. So somebody that clicks it will go to wherever you're telling them to go to. You can, of course, bold this text if you want to make it stand out, change the color of it, so on and so forth. And then you can add your email signature. So you can keep kind of building these out. Once this template is done, like you've created your initial template, that's there. It's just a matter then of going in and swapping out the picture, swapping out the information, swapping out the picture, swapping out the title, content, things like that. Again, if you want columns, so like three different columns, you would have that for a cell um, in there. Again, it can, it can be. Again, the first time you do it is going to be the most work, right? So um, 
it's just really however you wish to do it. So if let's say, you know, test article, and then maybe I want to add a table within my table, because I want this to be the, the header or the article title. Let's copy that over there. Oh, come on. So there, that's your test article. It's outside of that. I go down. I'm now writing. You can bold this or format that. So maybe you want it as a, a heading too, not so big, but still a heading. And you want it centered in here. And you want this, obviously, more or less full width of that. So there's your test article. And then you can still write whatever it is. Maybe these are little briefings of different posts that you have. Okay, now a couple things to include engagement is I have this, this one tool down here, it's called Capture, it is by TechSmith. Okay, so um, this, is, this is useful if you want to capture an image to throw into your email. Um, one common thing might be stats, right? You, you don't wanna just copy all the stats in there, you wanna take an image of a stat and then have that image link or a little bit of a write-up, you know, for full, you know, stat, stats on the market go here. Again, I'm just gonna use Treb, um, Treb stats, see what pulls up. And so you have like quick view, whatever. So if you go into the quick view, I think it's quick view on this one anyway, everyone has the different, different ones. These are not images because they move, right? So you can't just copy this as an image. Um, oh, apparently you can on this one. Um, but when you're trying to do the whole thing, I'm not sure what this is gonna grab, it may not copy the whole image for you. So what you can do is use this little capture tool. So it's TechSmith Capture. And basically when you capture it, you can just capture the image, however much of that image you want, and then you just capture it. Now you've got the image, you can add arrows, you can do whatever. In this case, you will save it. If you copy it and try to paste it, it won't work. Um, so I'm just gonna go capture and go save. And then back here, maybe I want that to be in here. So I'm going to upload an image, which is that capture desktop. There's the capture, open that. And there's that, that image right there. Again, you can change the properties. So clicking on the image, go 100% so that it's mobile responsive. Go okay. There, what, did, what just happened? There we go. Um, so now it's like full width, essentially. At any time, you can preview this. All right, so you can see how it's gonna lay out in an email. So you can see like nothing is like off, all skewed, all, all funky. You can see here that maybe you need to change this because in a standard email, it might be wrapping that around, right? So in that case, what I would do is, again, it will take you a little bit of time the first time around, but maybe I just wanna move this to the second line and move this to the center and then preview it. And you can see that it's now like a little bit different. Even if you remove the ad, it would probably really look better in that sense of things. Um, so even if you're doing like things where you're adding these images, you can still add content below it, essentially. Um, you know, stats for housing in Toronto for full list of stats. I'm gonna go here. And again, you can either copy this link and put them, send them right to the, the stats, right? So you can either throw that in there, um, it'll already create it as a link, or you can highlight your text and create that hyperlink with the chain. So that that text is now, we're gonna put that there, we want it as a new window and go okay. And so now that text is also a hyperlink. So however it works for you, um, that's gonna be the best suited for yourself. Another way to get, so there's a text capture. Um, the other is through the um, a Jiffy, okay? So when things are moving, this is where people are more inclined to click. This is why BombBomb's so successful is because it's a moving picture. It's not a video in that email. It is a moving picture, which is a GIF. 
And when somebody clicks on it, it then brings them into the bomb bomb interface to watch that video. So you can do similar things uh, without using bomb bomb if you care to. You could also copy an email from bomb bomb. So if you have a generic video that you tend to send out to your database, you can actually have that as an email template. So basically you send it to yourself, you just copy the email, add in the short codes that you need in there, and then you can include it as part of like an initial drip. So when a lead comes in, for example, they get that text message five minutes after they register, and let's say within, I don't know, four hour or four hours, let's say after that, a video that email goes out with that generic video that you've created. Um, it'll all be linked to bomb bomb. It's just you don't have to do it manually anymore or have it as part like it's still on bomb bomb. It's just part of the campaign. So you don't have to jump into two places anymore. It's just there. Of course if you're creating unique video for those individuals then that's not going to work. Um, but if you have um, generic videos that you tend to to send out just to kind of introduce yourself, it'll hundred percent be beneficial to you um, in there. So with respect to GIF, um, let me just open up a new window because it won't allow me to do it in an incognito window. Um, so you can go to Jiffy.com. Um, so on Jiffy.com, this is a, where you can create your own GIFs. Um, so whether you're creating it from an image or whether you're creating it from a video. Um, so let me log in. I don't know what my logins are, so we'll, this will be fun. Um, so you can definitely do that, but give me one second here. Uh, let me just log in with Facebook, see if that works. Da, 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 da. Okay, that's fine. Did it save? Okay, it saved. Um, so, I'm going to close that. So basically, once you're logged in, you can create a GIF on here. So you just click that GIF, and you can either take a URL from YouTube, for example, if it's a video you have on YouTube. Um, you can also choose a photo or what have you. Again, we just want to add some animation to that picture to make it moving. Um, so let's just go to my desktop. Let's just go to my marketing and... I'm going to grab here. Look at that one. So now it's got that on here, right? So you can add text on here. So, you know, call us today. And you can move this text wherever you want it. You can change the color of that text. You can, you know, change the, the formatting or how that how the how it looks essentially as far as the style you can also add an anim animation right so maybe you want it to like flash like call us today call us today <laughs> um or it's typing so you can do that on there you can also create it as a standard meme as well so that's the classic you can do it as a meme that would then have it kind of create that banner on the image with that and so you can you can have that on there change that you know to make it stand out you can also add stickers as well. So stickers is, uh, you know, just little things that you can stick on there. So maybe you want it to have, you know, a click here, whoops, here. You want that on there. Um, so you just drag and you drop it or click it, I guess, not drag and drop. Um, so then you can just throw it on there. Now that's, that's moving. So once you're done animating, adding whatever it is that you want, you just go to continue to upload. And then once you're on upload, you just upload it to Jiffy. You don't need to add any tags if you don't want to. It'll be public if someone finds it. They can use it. You can turn public off if you don't want other people to find it um, on there. So once it's creating, it's going to create the GIF. You now then just need to save this as an image on your computer. Okay, so all you're gonna do is right click that and save image as, because GIF again is just a moving image, nothing else. Um, so let's just go training GIF, so I know what it is, and I want this to actually go into my desktop, not my downloads, there we go. So now it's down on my computer, 
So I can then go into my email, and again, it's a picture. So then when you upload your picture, you have the training GIF, go open. It's gonna be on there. So and it will move in there for you guys. So when the email goes out, it's just gonna encourage somebody to click it. And it's the same if it's a video. So if it's a video, and I'll show you how to do a video as well, um, this is if they're like you're, you're, it's an alternate to using bomb bomb the video you could have the video um, when somebody clicks on it again you're going to tell them where to go so you can have that video on Facebook you can have that video on YouTube you can have it anywhere really that you can have that video is just you know encouraging the click so basically if you go create um, and I'm just going to grab a YouTube video so any YouTube I just want one that's moving more or less that you guys can see more of the animation. And let's just go home and see what's, let's see what's on here. Uh, come on, there's gotta be something where someone's like, moving that's music here let's try this thing some video for kids nope that won't work so the videos have to they can only be 15 minutes long just so you know on jiffy that's too long of a video um now let's try this one this one is only 335 so all you're going to do is share it and then copy the link of the video that you have on on YouTube because when you're doing Jiffy it has to be on on YouTube it could be on Vimeo as well you can also I believe upload a video um, and then you put the URL it's going to go on here you're then going to select the duration right how long of the duration do you want this GIF to actually be do you want it to be 10 seconds long whatever it may be you can choose where it's going to start as well Okay, so there's your Jeff, and then you can continue to decorate. So same as the picture, you're gonna be able to continue to decorate this. And I do apologize if anyone is on Facebook right now. I'm on a single screen. Again, I told you I am on, uh, I'm elsewhere. So I'm just gonna see. No, I don't think there's any comments. So I'm just waiting for this to upload. Hopefully it uploads. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer, and if it doesn't work, I'm gonna do it again. No, let's just go back, I don't have the patience. So I'm gonna go continue to decorate. And I don't know why. He's not pulling it in here. Come on. Bear with me guys. I don't know why it is, if it's my internet or if it's Jiffy itself. So all I need is for it to load. I can act, you can still decorate these based on like the, the picture themselves, um, how you can add text to them, you can add the stickers to them to encourage the clicks. It won't allow me though to, to move on until it's like actually loaded onto this page but it will be the same idea as the image. So basically, you're gonna decorate that video however you want. You're then going to continue to upload, and then you're gonna upload it to Jiffy, and again, you're just gonna save it as an image, because even though you're using a video, it is still just an image. Um, 
I don't know if I have any test ones that are already in the system to show you, probably not on this computer, there might be some in the training, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, if this doesn't load, because I don't want to sit here and, there we go, uh, I don't want to waste too much of you guys' time on this. So basically now we can see this is the, the GIF that's so many lines, moving picture. Um, you can add the text, you can add your, your stickers, right? So. Here, let's just click this one here. Maybe we want that over there. This is just uh, just to give you guys kind of an example. <laughs> Obviously, you'd probably want arrows. So you can do, if you do YouTube, um, if you are kind of mimicking the fact that you're trying to kind of create, you know, a video for somebody to play, um, you can use, you know, something like that where somebody is kind of saying, like, click on it. Um, and then continue to upload, upload to Jiffy. And then same idea where you're going to save it as an image. And I'll send this to myself so that you guys can see how it populates in an email itself. Do you guys have any questions about Jiffy? This will help encourage your click rates. Um, so if you're doing stats or a newsletter or anything, um, it's like when something's moving, people just have to click it. It's just like, I, I don't know what it is, <laughs> but they, the tendency to have to click increases um, just with something movie, moving. So video, uh, just save that and go back down here. And then this is going to be, again, it's an image, it's not a video. So we're uploading that. We've got the video, Jeff. And then go, there's the, that video. So I see we have a question here in the chat. Yes, Navita Jiffy is free. You don't have to pay for it. Um, it's a free thing to use. There might be other ones I just know of, of Jiffy. So that's the one I use. Now, again, I would, I would always end an email with your email signature. Um, this is good as well as if you are part of a team. It will replace the signature of whoever is sending out that email. Um, so whether it's you or a team member, it'll be their information. So I'm going to save this. And then I'm going to send it to myself so that you guys can see. And let me let's see if I can find myself on here. Uh, yeah, I've marked most of those as invalid. So we'll just do this one and fix the email address if I can. I'm going to edit this email. Com. Let me. So I'm going to just click on that. The test now, the newsletter, I can actually just type newsletter and it's, it's giving me the test newsletter that I did. Um, and I can't remember, it was this one, training emails. So there's the email that I'm going to send out to them. You can send a test email to yourself first. So before you send anything to anyone in our system, you can always send a test email. And what that does is it sends it to you. And then so you can go check on it and then um, look after and then before you make a decision to send it to everyone. Um, so I'm just going to pull into my inbox here to get that. Here we go. There is that email that just came through. Come on. So it kind of puts it, and there's your GIF. So the GIFs are always moving. So it looks like a video. This one's always moving. All right, so it just kind of allows you to see what is there. And then because Brana has her say, her signature information saved as the training is automatically just pulling hers because that's just how we have it set up. Um, but that's essentially how you would, you 
could do that. Now you could always reduce the size of everything, but that's where it's like testing it and trying it out and kind of seeing what's going to be the best scenario, depending on what you're, you're trying to accomplish in the system. Now to send that as a mass email is pretty straightforward because again, you've now saved it as a template. So if you are making different templates, depending on, you know, different audiences, again, that's where you're using your tags. Right, so if I wanted to, if I created a, a newsletter that's, let's say, specific to first time buyers, I'm gonna filter by tag, because I have tags that filtered as first time buyer. And I'm gonna go any, just in case, like all, so when you're filtering by tag, just so you know, um, all means that they have to have all those tags selected. So if I'm selecting two tags, for example, they would have to have both of those tags. They can have additional tags, but they have to at least have both of those tags. Um, none means they don't have anything. So if you wanted to send an email out to everyone except your first time buyers, you would use none. Um, any means that they can have either or. So if you're selecting five tags, they, can ha they have to have at least one of those tags. And then if you're doing only selected means they can only have those specified tags, nothing else. Um, so any is, is typically your safest route um, to go just depending on what you're doing. And then you'd find it. So let's say, as you can see, I have any, there's multiple choices here for first time buyer, just because this is a training serum. Um, and then we're gonna apply that filter. So now I've got 42 people in here that have been marked as being a first time buyer. So I would then select all these individuals and go select all. And again, if you're just creating a generalized new letter that you're sending to everyone, you don't have to filter. You basically can select everyone. Now, what you can also do in here is because you obviously want to not try to attempt to send to people that have bad emails or have opted out, you can go a step further um, and go email validity. And so if you only want people that have either a valid email or you just don't know yet, um, then do that. It's just basically eliminating anyone that has an invalid or opted out email. So once we, we do that, it goes from 42 to seven. Okay, so seven people I can legitimately actually send an email to. So once you select all of those leads, you're just going up to apply actions and you're sending that mass email. And from here, you're all you're going to do, my gosh, why is this so slow? Send mass email. The little pop-up will appear. I don't know why it's not, there we go. Um, and it's the same idea. You can go, you know, I'm gonna type in newsletter. I have here, that's your test subject. It's gonna show you, you can still edit it in here if you care to. You can still send that test email and then basically you just send it out. Once you send it out, you're gonna be able to see status, okay? Um, for mass email. So how you do that is you're gonna go over to the flag on the left-hand side and you go to mass email. Now it's gonna give you a time frame of today. Obviously I didn't send anything today. So you can actually pick the time frame. I'm just gonna go all messages just to see what's in here. And so there's three, right? So here's one that was sent out. It tells you how many, there was only one that was sent out. This was sent to four, the so four of four. Um, that one was sent to 10 of 10, that kind of thing. Now this is old, so the summary might not be there, but typically when you, when you send them, the summary will be there. So you'll be able to see the summary of, again, these are so old that it's just not producing for me, that um, you'll be able to see how many people opened that email, how many people clicked on that email, how many people may have opted out of that email. Um, so it gives you stats on all that. And so with each stat, you can actually pull up all those individuals. Uh, when you send a mass email as well, it's gonna, you're gonna see this little filter at the top here. Um, what this does, and let's just see, cause that one was four people. What this does is when you click on it, it goes back to the CRM system. Oh, so that must have been sent when there was no one in here. But basically what it would normally do is just show you the filters that you actually used for that specific audience. So if you wanted to retarget that same audience, you can. 
Another thing that you can do is if you find yourself like creating different audiences for yourself or newsletter audiences, once you add your filter, just give it a name, you know, first time buyer or downsizer or generic newsletter audience. Uh, whatever it is, give it a name. You can create it as a personal filter. You can also create it as a company. So company filters means that if you're a team leader, primary account holder, other agents will have access to use that filter if they care to. If you create it as a personal filter, uh, only you have access to that filter. No one else can actually use those filter settings. Um, so then that makes it easier. It just shows up in your applied safe filters for you to just click on and then it'll show that audience you can then select all, send that mass message. Does anyone have questions about anything <laughs> that, that I've gone over? Need me to recap or back step on, on a certain aspect with regard to the template or mass messaging or anything like that? I... So Navita is asking, where can we access a library for pictures for email template or marketing? Um, so there's a couple ways that you can do it. So typically, you can go on Google. If you go into more, you are, nope, those settings, I think. Tools. Tools. It's tools, you guys. Um, so you're going to go into usage rights. Um, so you can be labeled for reuse. Um, or labeled for, yeah, so basically labeled for reduce or labeled for reuse with modification. So when it is labeled with reuse means that you are, you can use these images. They haven't been like blocked. No one can use these images kind of thing. So these are all the images that you could use. Another option is to go on things like Pixabay. Um, so if you go to pixabay.com, for example, um, there's also Pexels.com. So Pexels sometimes has a little bit more. So if you go to Pexels.com, Pexels.com, same idea. Um, so both of them have free images and video for commercial use. Okay, so if I go, you know, click here, let's just see, see that. Let's see what images. These are all photos for click here. Or these are sponsored photos. You will pay for those photos, just so you know. Um, you may, so those are photos, those are users. On um, Pixels, I'm pretty sure you can do illustrations as well. So if we go click here, for example, you have these images that you can all use. So that's Pixabay. And these are all, so like these are free to use for commercial. So basically you click it, it's a free download. You choose the size that you want to download and you download it. Um, so you have full authorization to use those images. Uh, so Tinder, yes, this was recording um, nonetheless. So Navita is asking about agent locators library, I imagine for images. Yes, you do have access. It's, uh, there's a little bit of a roundabout way to get to those images, but um, what I'll do is I'll kind of show you um, where. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is head on over to the legacy CRM system. Um, so for you, those of you that have a branded site with us, you just can click on your branded website. Um, if you don't have a branded website, what you can do is click on street match or billing even, um, and that will bring you over. So if I go to billing right now, it's gonna bring me into the legacy system. You know you're in the legacy because your menu's up at the top here and it looks very old school. Um, so once you're in here under the settings, you have the website image gallery right here. So it gives you several images that we have um, that you can essentially use. Now, so that's just one way that you can find images. Another is like if you have a website, go into your website. And when you use in the website editor, again, this is a roundabout way. You're gonna go into your content editor. So just oh, click on the content editor. So, and the content editor is you know you're in there because you got all these little dashes around anything. So if you click on this, 
basically all you're going to do is upload an image. So you're going to go image and you click browse server. Okay. So when you browse the server, it's going to open up the image gallery. So if it's places, it's because these are height and the width, um, people in here. So if you want to view the image, you can just click view full. There is your image, right click it, save that image. That's all you got to do. Does that help? It is a roundabout way of finding them, but if you're looking for straightforward, just go into the settings and do it that way. Um, but yeah, the images are there. They're just not so simple to find necessary. Um, now, many of you guys, if you are on the automated lead gen, uh, we often get the question from individuals. We got a few minutes left, so I figure I'd cover this as well. Um, is how to change the text messages that go out automatically. So that is really, really, it's pretty straightforward to do. It's not overly complicated. Um, again, what I would definitely do is under here, go into under your settings tab, go into SMS templates, build out exactly what you want it to say first. Um, it's going to be easier because you're going to have all the short codes in there to utilize, right? Um, if you mess up on a short code because you're doing it manually and you put um, first name with a capital F but a lowercase n for name, it will not work. Your messages will go out saying first name. Um, so that's why it's better to use the template to build it that way. That way you're dragging, dropping. There's, there's no, you know, there's less room for errors, um, needless to say. So to do that, what all you're going to do is go into your campaign template editor um, when you're doing that. So once you're in here, you can see that you can clone. So what's great about the, the campaigns when you're building them in here is if you have two campaigns um, that are very similar, but let's say it's, it's, they're differentiated by the initial text message because maybe you're running Facebook ads and maybe you're running Google ads. So Facebook ads, they didn't actually come to your website to sign up, whereas Google, they did come to your website to sign up. So maybe you just, it's that first text that's the only differentiating factor, um, then you can actually clone an existing campaign. So then all you have to do is modify the, the, the first message. You don't have to rebuild your entire campaign again. So once you go to create a campaign, you can give it a name if you are cloning. So if you want to just clone that existing campaign that your leads are on, all you're going to do is go down to the system campaigns. And we have two. So one is either Pacific time and one is Eastern time. It's just basically the only difference between those two is the silent hours, which you can adjust anyway. Um, so you can definitely just clone that, clone those emails if you want to just modify it slightly. Um, so I'll just show you kind of how that looks. So you just go clone and then it's going to put it in. It, it doesn't put anything. So until you click clone, then it's going to have that as a cloned campaign, right? So there's that. Now you can still modify the campaign. Um, so basically anytime you have a campaign, there's stopping clauses. Um, the stopping clauses are a lifesaver because it's going to automatically stop that campaign for you um, depending on what rules you give it. So in this case, we have the stopping clauses on the entire campaign is if somebody's pipeline status changed. So if you make contact after the first SMS, the second SMS isn't going to go out. It just stops that campaign. Now, you also can have stopping clauses instead of having it on the entire campaign. You might only want it on specific actions. Okay, so depending on what it's for, I sometimes prefer that, right? If you're just doing like a, a soft nurture campaign, you wouldn't necessarily want it to stop if you've made contact with someone. You might want it to stop maybe if you've set a meeting or you're now showing them houses, um, but not just generally if you, you know, made contact. You can also do silent hours. So silent hours is necessary if you are sending text messages automatically. So what this does is it prevents those messages from going out 
automatically between the hours that you specify. Um, so if you only want to be sending somebody a new lead a text message, you know, up until nine o'clock at night, you would basically set your silent hours to nine o'clock p.m. basically till whatever time in the morning. So let's say nine in the morning. That means if a lead comes in any time between those hours, the message isn't gonna go out until the silent hours are over. So you're not messaging new leads at like three o'clock in the morning. Now, I believe they have them actually, the silent hours built into these. So the first thing that you'll do is click on the first action. This is your first action. This is the SMS that goes out automatically. It's all short code, you can change it, right? But if you're gonna change, just like use it as is, but just modify it, tweakly, tweak it like moderately, you can go in, just make sure you don't mess around with the short codes because if they are edited in any way incorrectly, they will not work for you. Um, so there's that. You have the stopping clause. So they've threw the stopping clauses on this first one. So if you've made contact with that lead within the five minutes, this text isn't gonna go out, basically. Or if you've marked them as garbage right away because it's all just bad information, um, it's not gonna go out or attempt to go out. Now the delay period off any first action is the delay period after how long after the person gets assigned to this campaign does this text message go out? And this one here is five minutes after. So you can always modify that if you really wanted to. Um, and then the silent hours are indicated from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. Um, in the morning. You then have your second action. So this is where I tend to tweak things a bit because this one here has the stopping clause if you've made contact with them. Um, I modify this, I tend to modify it slightly. Um, because really it goes out one day after just to kind of confirm that they got the listings, right? So I just kind of tweak the wording a little bit um, so that it's, it's appropriate for a lead that I haven't spoken to, but also appropriate perhaps to a lead that I have spoken to. So again, it's just, you know, confirming that they've got the listings in their inbox, right? Let me know if you want to make any changes. Um, but it's, I feel like that's still a good text message to go out a day after you've spoken to somebody um, just to confirm that they got those listings. Like, you know, there's no harm in doing that. So I would technically take the stopping clause off for people that I've made. So basically, if you're showing them the first day, that's awesome. Um, so maybe if they were show, showing or you're signing an agreement on the first day, it doesn't go out. Um, but otherwise, I want it to go out, even if I've made contact with that person. Now, the delay period for the second action or any subsequent action is always from the previous action. So how long after the first text goes out does this text goes out and this one is one day after that first text goes out this text will go out um, so then you can update if you make any changes you can then add more so you just click the plus sign you can add emails SMSs you can create tasks automatically you can assign somebody to a different campaign and so on and so forth um, so you can build an entire campaign now once you've done that and you've built out a campaign, I always you know, indicate to anyone, if you're building out a campaign and you're auto signing it, and you just need to have a second set of eyes, look over it, make sure it's gonna be working the way you intended it to work, um, I'd be happy to take a look at it for you, just so that you feel rest assured that you know, it's, it's gonna run smoothly. Um, but what you would do now is if you want all leads coming in from a specific source, so you have automatic assignments, okay? So you click on that, and then basically you would select the source. So I want every lead perhaps that comes in from um, Zapier, for example, to be automatically thrown onto this campaign. That's what the automatic assignment is. So for you guys, it would be, your, if you're replacing the initial text for your lead gen site, it would be the, whatever your lead gen URL is. Um, if some of you will have two, right? Because one might be HTTP and one might be HTTPS. I just play it safe and select both of them, um, just in case, regardless, anyone that comes in from that domain um, essentially is going to be put onto this campaign. 
So for some of you, you may find that you have multiple sources. You might have sources indicating somebody's on the home worth, right? So you might have a seller campaign. So when somebody fills out your home worth landing page, maybe 10 minutes after they sign up, a text message automatically goes out for you. And then maybe you have a further drip that, that continues to go with like tips and tricks and stuff. It's a soft nurture about, you know, listing, selling your home, information, you know, knowledge source, that sort of thing. Um, so you select that. Um, you can also do it based on lead type. So regardless of where a lead comes in, if it's a lead, let's say, that is indicated as it's a home buyer, so anyone that's on the automated lead gen, all their lead types are home buyers. Um, but maybe you also have a branded website. Uh, individuals that fill out the daily listing alerts landing page are also a lead type of home buyer. So maybe regardless, you just want you know home buyers um to come in so you can actually select two if you wanted to so if you wanted you know your branded website and your lead gen site you have those as the sources but they also have to have the lead type of home buyer in order to be thrown on that campaign um, so you can have multiple automatically assigned campaigns just depends on the source of those leads and have differentiating campaigns so once you've selected your can your 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 automatic assignment source or type or even a tag, um, you're going to click update and that's going to save it. Now this is the step that you have to do. So once you've automatically assigned or if you want me to look at your campaign before you automatically assign it, I'm happy to do that. But if you're feeling confident and you're turning this on, you're going update, you have to remember to turn off the existing campaign. Otherwise, they're going to be assigned to both campaigns. Um, so they'll get two text messages within five minutes and two messages the next day, that kind of thing. So what you're going to do is to turn off the existing one, you're going to go into the profile and into your user preferences. And when you're on this profile tab here, you're just going to scroll down. And you can see this lead welcome campaign. When you log into your system, you will likely see something selected. You are going to turn it to nothing selected and then just make sure you save it. So that will turn off that existing automatic campaign that's being assigned to your leads. Um, so that's really it. Does anyone have any questions here? I know we've gone over um, with respect to this. I will be adding this video. So it is in our YouTube or our Facebook channel or Facebook group, I should say. Um, so it'll be in the video section because I did uh, stream it to Facebook. Um, I will be uploading it to our YouTube channel as well. So once I get it back, I'll upload it to the YouTube channel so that you guys can watch it. And then if any of you guys do need any further um, you know, assistance with respect to this, you know, by all means, just reach out. We wanna, you know, see you guys succeed in that, or if you have something and you're just not sure how to create that template, or you're getting a little bit stuck or lost, you know, we're here to help. We wanna see you succeed and, and leverage the system and kinda of go from there. So thank you all for watching and participating today. Um, yeah, if you guys need help, just let me know. Aside from that, have everyone have yourself a great, weekend and we'll see you next time.